Hello friends, in this video we are actually talking about the cellular respiration and different stages of cellular respiration. In the last video we talk about the, an overview of respiration and different steps like glycolysis, pyruvate oxidation and Krebs cycle. And in this video we are going to talk about the last step of cellular respiration that is electron transport chain. It can otherwise called as mitochondrial oxidative phosphorylation. Mitochondria are the major site of oxidative phosphorylation. Here the electron transport chain catalyzes an electron flow from FADH2 and NADH to oxygen where oxygen is a final electron acceptor of respiratory process. We know that NADH and FADH2 are formed during glycolysis, pyruvate oxidation and Krebs cycle and they transfer electrons and uh, protons into oxygen of electron transport chain. And during the flow of electrons and protons from organic molecules to oxygen, the energy is released and it is utilized in the phosphorylation of ADP to form ATP molecules. The electron transport chain involves a step-by-step -step transfer of electrons and protons through a chain of intermediate electron carriers such as NAD, FAD, ubiquinone, cytochromes, etc. And these electron carriers of electron transport chain are organized into large functional complexes in inner mitochondrial membrane. Uh, these are the important, four important complexes involved in the transfer of electrons from NADH or FADH2 into oxygen. This is the fifth complex called ATP synthase involved in ATP synthesis. The electron transport chain that consists of four multi-protein complexes four multi-protein complexes all are embedded in inner mitochondrial membrane. The complex one that catalyzes the electron transfer from NADH to ubiquinone and the complex two that catalyzes the electron transfer from succinate to ubiquinone and the complex three that catalyzes the electron transfer from ubiquinone to cytochrome C and complex four uh, that catalyzes the uh, electron transfer from cytochrome C to oxygen. Now we will look in more detail at the structure and function of each complex of mitochondrial respiratory chain. Uh, the complex 1 is also known as NADH dehydrogenase and here the electron carriers in the complex 1 include the cofactors such as FMN and FES and it helps to transfer the electron from NADH to ubiquinone through the FMN and FES. So first the electron transfer from NADH to FMN then to FES finally reaches ubiquinone. And during the process of transfer of electrons from NADH to ubiquinone, the four protons are pumped from matrix to intermembrane space for every pair of passing electrons through this complex. Then the complex 2 is otherwise called as succinate dehydrogenase. The electron carriers in the complex 2 include the cofactors such as FAD and FES. And the complex 2 transfer the electrons from succinate to ubiquinone through FAD and FES. So succinate transfer the electrons to FAD, then to FES, then finally to ubiquinone. And both this complex 1 and complex 2 help to transfer the electrons to ubiquinone. The complex 3 is otherwise called as cytochrome B6, uh, BC1 complex. And this complex consists of FES, cytochrome B, cytochrome C1. Uh, and this complex 3 that helps to transfer the electrons from ubiquinone to cytochrome C through FES, cytochrome B and cytochrome C1. Thus the complex 3 that helps to transfer the electrons from ubiquinone to cytochrome C. So every pair of electrons uh, pumping from ubiquinone to cytochrome C, the four protons are pumped from matrix to intermembrane space. And... Uh, uh, so this complex 1 and complex 3 that help to transfer the protons into the intermembrane space. And this produces a difference in the proton concentration across the mitochondrial membrane. It is very significant in ATP synthesis. Because these proton concentration resulted in the formation of ATP molecules. Then the complex 4. Complex 4 is otherwise called as cytochrome oxidase. And it consists of cytochrome A, cytochrome A3, and also copper ion, copper A and copper B. And these copper ions are very essential for the transfer of electrons from uh, cytochrome C to oxygen without generating the harmful H2O2. Uh, this complex carries the electrons from cytochrome C to oxygen through cytochrome A and cytochrome A3. That is, they carry the electrons from cytochrome C to oxygen and reducing it into 
water and during this electron transfer proton is pumped from matrix to intermembrane space and this helps to add an electrochemical potential help in the synthesis of atp molecules this on the whole it become clear that the combined functioning of uh, complex 1 complex 2 and complex 3 that help in the transfer of electrons from nadh to oxygen and the combined action of complex 2 complex 3 and complex 4 that help to transfer the electrons from succinate to oxygen now we will discuss about the atp synthesis or oxidative phosphorylation in oxidative phosphorylation the transfer of electrons to oxygen through a complex 1 to complex 4 is coupled with the synthesis of atp uh, it occurs in the presence of enzyme called atp synthase the experimental finding uh, that confirmed that there are three site of phosphorylation occurs during the mitochondrial electron transport first during Uh, the transport of electron from nadh to ubiquinone uh, in the complex one here one molecule of atp is synthesized and second process occurs here when the electron is transfers from complex b cytochrome b to cytochrome c in the complex 3 and third atp synthesis occurs when the electron is transfer from cytochrome a to cytochrome a3 in the complex 4 this the terminal oxidation of nadh that is nadh uh, the transfer of electrons from nadh uh, this results in the formation of three atp molecules but in the complex 2 there is no atp synthesis this the oxidation of fadh2 that leads to the formation of only two atp molecules the mechanism of mitochondrial atp synthesis is based on the chemo osmotic hypothesis which was proposed by peter mitchell which explain there is a coupling between the mitochondrial electron transport and atp synthesis the according to chemo osmotic theory the orientation of electron carriers within the mitochondrial inner membrane that allow the transfer of protons across the inner membrane during the electron flow the flow of electrons through this complex is coupled with the flow of protons and this help on the formation of atp uh, so the electron flow through the complex 1 to complex 4 uh, that is always coupled with the proton pumping across the membrane and produces a chemical gradient and uh, electrical gradient they together called proton motive force this inner membrane uh, space uh, it is impermeable to protons so this protons can re enter the matrix only through a specific proton specific channels called f0 it is a part of atp synthase and the proton motive force that drive the proton back into the matrix that provide energy for, for uh, atp synthesis now we will look at the structure of atp synthase the atp synthesis is governed by an enzyme called atp synthase and it is also called as complex 5 this large enzyme complex of inner inner mitochondrial membrane that catalyzes the formation of atp from adp driven by the flow of protons from inner membrane space to matrix the atp synthase that consists of two major components f0 and f1 uh, it is a structure of atp synthase it consists of f1 component and f0 component and f1 is a peripheral membrane protein composed of at least five different subunit and it contain the catalytic site for the converting atp adp to atp this f1 composed of 3 alpha 3 beta 1 delta 1 gamma 1 epsilon and f1 is attached to matrix side of inner membrane here the alpha subunit have the binding site for adp and atp and beta subunit have a catalytic site for atp synthesis and uh, gamma subunit has um, a channel which serve as a gate that regulate the flow of protons from f0 to f1 and this f0 is a integral membrane protein that composed of at least three different subunit a b and c and it form a channel through which the proton can cross the inner membrane and reaches the mitochondrial matrix the process of atp synthesis can be explained by the binding change mechanism proposed by paul boyer during the mitochondrial electron transport the electron flow is coupled with the 
flow of proton across the membrane from the matrix to intermembrane space and this generate a proton motive force across the membrane this forces the movement of h plus back to uh, the matrix through f0 of atp synthesis and the passage of h plus through this channel is coupled with the synthesis of atp molecules and for the synthesis of one atp 3 h plus has to pass from uh, intermembrane space to matrix and according to this mo uh, model the movement of protons through the channel of f0 complex uh, that drive uh, the rotation of entire f0 complex and uh, the gamma subunit of f0 sorry f1 complex attached to f0 also rotate within the catalytic complex like a shaft of motor and causes a conformational changes in the catalytic complex result in the synthesis of atp the proton centering the f1 f0 uh, do not directly take part in the atp synthesis they only initiate the conformational changes in f1 unit and this in turn alter the affinity of f1 for atp initially adp is bind with the catalytic uh, site of f1 but as the f1 subunit uh, that accept the proton from cytoplasm and get protonated the affinity of the catalytic site for atp increases and the atp synthesis occurs and the conformational changes in f1 unit has another effect also it move the h plus or proteins inward and releases them into the mitochondrial matrix once the proton are released the enzyme that return to the original conformation and releases the already synthesized atp now we will look at the cyanide resistant pathway the flow of electrons in the mitochondrial electron transport chain is blocked by the presence of cyanide cyanide is a deadly poison which inhibit the activity of cytochrome oxidase so that the electron transport is blocked this type of respiration is called the cyanide sensitive respiration the plant mitochondria having an alternate oxidase system through which the terminal oxidation of reduced coenzyme continues even in the presence of cyanide and this type of respiration is called as cyanide resistant respiration uh, it is a normal electron transport chain here uh, in the presence of cyanide the cytochrome oxidase uh, is act uh, its activity is inhibited this in the cyanide resistant respiration the flow of electrons from the reduced coenzyme to ubiquinone a uh, same as in the normal uh, mitochondrial electron transport chain but after this point instead of passing the electrons from uh, ubiquinone to cytochrome b6 uh, the electron will pass from ubiquinone to flavoprotein that is from this point the electron pass from ubiquinone to a flavoprotein and from this uh, the electron get uh, transfer to an alternate oxidase and finally it reaches the oxygen this uh, this respiration process or electron transport chain will continues even in the presence of cyanide the next topic is rotindone insensitive pathway rotindone is used as an insecticide pesticide or pesticide it is a inhibitor of complex 1 of mitochondrial respiration chain thereby in, uh, interfering the electron transport chain in the mitochondria they inhibit the transfer of electrons from uh, fes centers in the uh, complex 1 to ubiquinone thus the electrons in the complex 1 cannot pass to the ubiquinone and this result in the blockage of oxidative phosphorylation with the limited synthesis of atp and incomplete electron transfer to oxygen could lead to the formation of reactive oxygen species uh, which can damage dna and other components of mitochondria